What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis. Scoop. Sam Claiborne. Hey, everybody. And Mark Medina, sitting in for Tina this week. Welcome back to the show, Mark. I just realized two of my lights are off. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for the invite. It well, it looks look like, like the it. one, yeah, illuminating your face looks fine, and then it's weirdly blue behind you, which means you got something fancy happening. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're this good looking, you don't yeah. need all of the fancy lights. That's sure. that's what I get by on. Sure. It's the hat doing all the reflecting. <laughs> Mark weirdly blue Medina is what they call him. That's, that's what they've called me since I was a child. Uh, we've got a great show for you this week. Um, we're going to talk about uh, what games we've been playing and uh, a, a ran super random game from my past that I got. Completely sucked into last night. I think Justin will appreciate it. But first, that's the best. But first, of course, there was a Nintendo Direct yesterday. Uh, There were some significant announcements. There were some significant announcements that were omitted from the Nintendo Direct. First of all, did it leave us feeling uh, happy or unhappy? I mean, it was it was a bad direct, right? Mm. That, is that like a controversial <laughs> statement to make? Like, I love Mark? video. I love video games. And I love <laughs> Nintendo. So, like, you know, I'm not. I wouldn't say I was unhappy, but no, it was. It was not a good showing. <laughs> Mark is generally a happy guy. I, I tweeted this. I, I I tweeted this morning that I was like. Hey. Are Nintendo fans Nintendo fans, or are they just Mario and Zelda fans? So when Mario, <laughs> Zelda, I guess we'll throw Metroid in there. If they're not there, people aren't happy. I don't know. I thought it was cool. I, I'm also, I love golf games. I played like 80 hours of everybody's golf for play, mm-hmm. uh, PlayStation 4. So I am very excited for Mario Golf. And there's, it's Did an you RPG. Play that? It's amazing. Did you play the Mario Golf on 3DS that people freak out over? I didn't play that. Oh, it's so good. Uh-uh. I did. Mm-hmm. I did. How did you miss that, Mark? Like it's just- does it look like a spiritual successor to that, or does it look just like a completely from scratch redux of it? It looks like it, this one looks great. Like my fear, and I think I may have said something about this on social, is that Mario Tennis Aces was like fundamentally a sound, fun Mario Tennis game, but it was just very bare bones. It had like nothing in it. And so I was uh-huh. so worried about that for Mario Golf, but it sounds like they're going in the exact opposite direction where like it's got a full on RPG mode in it and it has like speed golf mm-hmm. and the multiplayer and all these different modes of play. And um, man, Mario mm-hmm. Golf for my money is like it's just a hair below like Mario Kart in terms of like the spin off Mario Pantheon. So yeah. I, I don't know. I'm really, really pumped for it. And for me, it was the highlight of the direct. Yeah, I, lo- I, I love think- speed golf mode looks really fun. Like seeing yeah, different that's power crazy. Ups they like run to things. It looks really fun. Mm-hmm. I love the Mario Golf games. I love Hot Shots Golf. Uh, I was just saying, look back at the series here. So it started with uh, Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Color, both in 1999. Then it came to GameCube. Then there was on uh, Game Boy Advance. And then the 3DS one that um, Sam had just mentioned. I think that's been all of them so far. And now there's Mario Golf Super Rush. There was, a, there was none on the Wii? I don't think so. Not oh. no. I mean, there was golf, right? When just, with Wii Sports, Wii golf, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wii golf, yeah. Which is really the interesting. Sixty four oh. version had. I, I remember the sixty four version had a lot of had the mini golf, and and I I hope this game has it, but I, I assume mm. if it did have it, they would have shown it. So mm. it may not. Maybe not. That one's yeah. coming. When is that coming? June twenty fifth. Is that the latest twenty twenty one video game now, with an uh, official release date? Is that after Back for Blood? When is Back for Blood? <laughs> it's getting there. Yeah. So they didn't put a date on Halo. <laughs> they just said delayed. Yeah. That, well, uh, yeah. The fall, autumn, whatever. Yeah, I think it's just fall. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I bet there's not much past June. June, June, June. <laughs> um, Mario Golf you know, is three days after Back for Blood. Gosh. But I guess the, oh, there's also like Skyward Sword HD is July. So we we got a, a date for that. Okay. So one thing I liked about this direct is that it was 50 minutes well spent. They, sometimes these directs do like 15 minutes on a single game that I don't care about. And this was just back-to-back announcements. And then that's kind of like E3 where like a mix of it is like things that are already out for people that just have no no clue, right? But there was plenty of new stuff. It wasn't all for me. And like, I, you know, I, I couldn't be less interested in the Zelda choice or the first party reveal choice of Splatoon and Skyward Sword. Those are just not yeah. for me, um, yeah. which is too bad. You know what's crazy about the Sky? I mean, I could talk about Skyward Sword forever, but you know what's crazy about that? They made a remake of Wind Waker and it's not available on Switch. Like it's yeah. just, it's already been mm-hmm. remade. And like, mm-hmm. I know they did the weird 
changes to make it possible to play on like the lower, you know, uh, uh, screen, which is fine. But like after seeing how Skyward Sword, they actually did think out how to do the controls on a controller, which will make that game more playable. Although they're weird, they're like skate controls. Yeah. Um, you know, they're willing yeah. to do that work. So th- that's why I'm just more surprised that we're not getting that and Wind Waker and Twilight Princess maybe in like a collection or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a, an HD Zelda collection what? would have been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What's that Metal Gear game? Metal Gear Rising? Where I yeah. think that game had a lot of like, you swipe the right stick and that's like the way he slashes his sword. I was, I was getting mm-hmm. vibes uh, like that. It seemed like the most interesting game from the direct was the game with that weird title, the Project Triangle yeah, yeah, yeah. moving game. What's well, that? People really seem to be into that. <laughs> yes, but we're we're gonna get to that, Mark. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Uh, but talking about the overall that. direct, I'm glad they used the time to do a bunch of announcements, and then I'm also glad they didn't talk about the games that are about to come out, like Pokemon Snap and stuff like that, because mm. that just means that there's a little bit fuller of a year than we knew before. And one other thing is that they teased this as talking about games that were coming out in early 2021, which was a lie. They, I mean, they just had all the stuff in there that was not from early 2021. And uh, that was interesting. I think that was to mitigate, just like Anuma coming out and doing this personally, to mitigate people's expectations about Breath of the Wild, which I'm worried now my uh, hopes that it's coming out this year are pretty much dashed. But yeah. they're going to have another big beat up in the summer, as they always do. And that should talk about fall games. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, just the fact that they said they hope to be able to share some news about Breath of the Wild 2 yeah. later this year, that yeah, doesn't yeah. give me a lot of confidence that it's actually coming out this year. It would have yeah, been, that's a 2025 yeah. announcement, basically. <laughs> it would have been such a perfect opportunity <laughs> if they would have just said, we're not showing Zelda today, you know, we look forward to you playing it you know, later this year, but like, nope. <laughs> they don't have that to but say to us either. I guess I, I never really... I, I never like stopped to think about this before, but it, they are kind of in a weird position. There hasn't been another time where there's been a direct sequel to a Zelda game, right? Because even Zelda Two mm-hmm. is a completely different game. Majora's Mask and like the map of Breath of the Wild. Phantom like, Hourglass has one. They they have some like that. There's a there was not like Phantom Hourglass Two. Yeah, it was called Spirit Tracks. Yeah, they did. We also the, we also don't know that this is Breath of the Wild Two. That's just well, that's I see what, what you're they call it. The, the sequel you're to Breath saying, of the Wild. Because Zelda 2 actually had the 2 in it, it was kind of like a direct sequel. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Uh, okay. And whereas, like, I don't know what they're, like, the map is, like, the main feature and the main character of that game and exploring that map. And so, like, they can't Mm -hmm. reuse it, right? Because we already know it and we already found all those Korok seeds. No, but they could Dark World it, Yes, they're totally going to reuse it and Dark World it. They're going to crack down through it. I mean, okay, maybe, yeah. That made me a little bit less excited, I think. Um, But anyway... (laughs) <laughs> I, 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 you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is going to be, you know, Termina in a totally new space. But my assumption from the start is that it was going to be like some twisted version of of that that same map. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Zelda's so all about that, right? I mean, Majora's Mask is the dark world version of of Ocarina of Time, and before that, you know, and of course, Ocarina of Time itself has multiple. Uh, eras in it and stuff like that so i think they could definitely stick to the zelda plan and do that what would be cool is if you could switch between eras or darkness or something like that or my ultimate dream would be a new map of course because because exploration and stuff although seeing changes to a map is also pretty fun it's kind of fun to see like oh this is interesting that this went from a swamp to a sky temple or something because they'll play with that theme and they'll and they'll really really you know play that up as something interesting to world building but that's for Skyward Sword. I never played the original. That came out at a, at a time that I was just completely over the Wii and <laughs> you waggle just never controls. Never played it, huh? No, Same. and like I, I think that's really common. My my, was, my my Wii was already in the closet. It was 2011. It's long. Yeah, I never played it. I never Many played years. it either. I'd been playing. Well, let me tell you, know, you all about Skyward Sword. I've been playing games in in high definition for years and years. At that point, I was like, "What is this? This is like the ugliest Zelda I've ever seen." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which I wrote, I wrote the strategy guide for that game, or at least contributed to it because multiple people worked on it, and it was a lot. Uh, that game is a really long, scripted, start to finish story Zelda. It's so oh, bad, oh, and like I, I, the parts of it that are likable are like, okay, 
I'm in a dungeon and it feels like a great complicated Zelda dungeon. That's not even what I like about Zelda. I can't wait to get out of dungeons when I'm in Zelda. I'm like, I can, like, get me back to the overworld with this damn chain hook so I can go get all the heart pieces that I needed. So, so like, the dungeons are really cool. But then they drop, it's like really weird because there's, there is no overworld. There's like a little place you can fly around as a bird on a bird. And then you can drop into a bunch of different regions that are pretty small. It's not that impressive. Yeah. Yeah. And I like what an indictment of the Wii. Like the whole game's thing was like, oh, the slashing with the, you know, use the sword and shield, use the nunstuck and mm-hmm. nunchuck and Wii remote. Can't be done on any other platform with any other technology. And then they're just like, oh, yeah, we, you know, we got stick controls in the game. Don't worry about it. Yep. And yeah. like, and I know the Switch controllers probably won't work very well for this. They say they're better technology, and that might be true. But like, mm-hmm. it just wasn't it wasn't an, a needed addition to that game. Now, when you see what what happens with that, like, it's if you could make this work, and if the stick works, I do like the idea of combat if, involving slashes that are like interesting. But they could have mapped those to buttons too. So I'm a little bit annoyed by the stick itself, to be frank. Yeah. I think I think it's weird because when when they were first showing it, I was like, "No way, it'll have motion controls, right?" They'll take those out and they'll fix it. But the game is just like it's built around those motion controls, and so then they show them, and then and then I was like, "Okay, so it has motion controls." And then they show the stick mm-hmm. thing, and it, it always makes me forget because the Switch, uh, you know, it has the Joy Cons, but Switch Lite doesn't have that option. Yeah. Exactly. So if you want to play that game on Switch Lite, you would you yeah. and it only had motion controls, you would have to Well, you know, the first 30 seconds of that somehow. video was shocking. Like when I was watching this and they're talking about motion controls, I was like, "What where are they going with this? What's going to happen?" Um and also like the the Switch Lite like extends to more problems. Like th- that did kind of cramp mm-hmm. the Joy-Con style. Like they can't mm-hmm. really do big exciting Joy-Con games at this point because of that system and that's that's really yep. interesting, it, it, and we're seeing the direct effects of that now. Mark, did you ever play Skyward Sword? Never. Nope. Yeah. I'm not the biggest Zelda fan. I'm going to be honest with y'all. So, like, mm. I, I Skyward Sword is definitely the one. The only ones I've played is like Ocarina of Time a thousand times, uh, Breath of the Wild, but I never beat it because I was at the very last like boss thing, and then I had to watch a speed run of it, and then so I saw the end, and I was like, all right, that's wow. enough. <laughs> Uh, and and then you like Breath of the Wild, though, right? Oh, I love Breath of the Wild. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. This is the opposite. But like, of yeah, that. I, I never played. I never played Twilight Princess. Any, you know, uh, mm-hmm. what's the cartoon one? Wind Waker, or Skyward mm-hmm. Sword, or Link to the yep. Past. Yep. Sorry, Justin. Or <laughs> what, are you, what are you looking at me? That's not my. The, I don't uh, know. Can play. Wind Waker is my favorite. Oh, you're 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 Super Metroid guy. I, I know yeah, that there was like a, a Super Nintendo game that you're super like big on. Yes, um, the, the the other things about Skyward Sword is that it is it came out at a time in which the timeline suddenly mattered because there was like this all this hoopla yeah. about the timeline, you know, splitting off three ways from that Dark Horse book, and then uh, this was supposed to be the first foundational game in the series. But like it's the same shit. It's like you get the master sword and the shield and you go fight moblins. Like it doesn't have like any like foundationally amazing revelations yeah. about the, the history of Zelda. So like that's disappointing to me. And you know, the the reason to play this game now though is that it it it's a little bit fixed, I think, with the button controls. It'll work as a portable game because it's linear. Like it drives you, you're not gonna get lost. You can put this if we ever fly in planes again. You'll be able to play this on one trip and then pick it up on the next trip because you're just doing, you just have a checklist of things to do and you just go through them. Hmm. So those are probably good Hmm. things for it being a portable Switch game. 60 bucks, I don't know. Should just come with those damn Joy Cons. Is it 60 bucks? Is which isn't that more than what it costs Uh, on the Wii? I don't I don't know how much it is. It's just I'm speculating. Especially because I just bought uh uh you know 3D world for 60 bucks and that just felt a little bit harsh, even with it's yeah. very awesome. Bucks. Why wouldn't it be? Nintendo's- Are we going to talk about what we can play? Because I'll say I'll save this, but I have some questions for Mark. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're going to get there. Okay, cool. <laughs> Nintendo's in a little bit of an interesting spot because, like, I, I love my Switch, and I'm probably playing my Switch more than my next gen consoles at this point. But like, it's really like I made fun of them a minute ago for adding non motion controls to uh, to Skyward Sword, but of course they had to, and like of course that was the right decision for them to make. And it's the same with all the games they're porting. Like the Switch, they're just porting everything. Every old Wii U game, just bring it onto the Switch, charge sixty dollars for it again, yep. which sucks and feels bad, and they're right to be kind of criticized for. But on the flip side, like 
I'm also kind of glad they're doing it. Like I was happy to rebuy and replay Pikmin three. Like it was great to experience that again. So, um, you know, I don't know. They're sort of damned if you do damned if you don't. It's just a clumsy, it's just a simplistic strategy, right? It's like, they're not bringing, they're just going one by one. And like it, it would have been interesting Mm. at, you know, the Zelda HD collection would have been a really good way to twist that. But like, boy, if we start getting to, uh, you know, Nintendo land and, Whatever that Wario game was, it's gonna, you know, we're hitting the Drakes now. <laughs> well, it brings up a weird thing about like game value. Like, is the Mario 3D World? Is it that was a sixty dollars game when it came out? It looks amazing, and you know, it's on your Switch. Does it not make it a sixty dollars game anymore? I don't know. It's a weird thing, just because it's old. For sure, I, I, I think I because think that's you can buy thing. it for ten dollars for Wii U, and it looks the same and plays basically the same. Like that should indicate that selling it for $60 is pretty cynical, but uh, they, they, for that one, they added value with the spinoff game, which Mm -hmm. I don't think is still worth, you know, I don't know. It's hard to evaluate what's worth 60 bucks, but I just paid 60 bucks to play Bowser's fury. Well, it's tough because breath of the wild came out in 2017. That game is still $60. (laughs) If you go to the store, like I'm sure it is. I, I I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. That's an interesting (laughs) thing you're bringing up though. Like games that hold their value are RPGs and big Nintendo first parties and stuff like that, because they're so playable. They're the games that people hang, hang on to the most. So there's more demand and you know, when we used to have used game stores like those, that would be a thing where it's like that, like Mario, like Breath of the Wild would stay $50 forever. But any other game mm-hmm. for the Switch from that era, from that launch, like, you know, would be $10 now or something. It's really interesting. Yeah. Mark, Breath of the Wild is currently $50 at Amazon. New? It's pretty pricey yeah. for a four year old game. <laughs> yeah. Sure. And Nintendo so, doesn't, uh, they don't drop their prices. They don't really do Black Friday deals, big ones either. Yeah. Mm hmm. And it's, yeah, they don't. But do it's they, still a great game. I remember, so it's still worth $50. <laughs> They do like bestseller series versions, but then they just cost the same price. What well, I guess, I guess the thing that bugs me is that if Skyward Sword had been an Xbox 360 game, I would just be able to play it on my Series X, and it would be upresed, and it would be running yeah. and looking great. You know, that's true. It would have been nice if the price of admission for the Switch included access to Wii U virtual stuff. That's just like a nice thing. Because boy, are they not paying attention to those Super Nintendo and Nintendo uh, updates yeah. anymore? Yeah, for sure. Okay, um, we, were, we, were, we already talked about Mario Golf Super Rush. Excited for that. We can now we can talk about Project Triangle Strategy, which is probably nice. the most on on the nose <laughs> tactics game name I've ever heard. It looks so good. It does look so good. Um, it, ah, it's you know it's got the art style from uh, Octopath Traveler, which was also. Introduced as Project mm. Octopath. I don't know if oh, Traveler is in the name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. I can't um, remember. But yeah, I remember they just dropped the name or the, the this, project part. Yeah. But this game, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's actually connected to Octopath Traveler. So I just, I, I don't know why they wouldn't make it a Final Fantasy Tactics game. Did you see they called, they called it out as a series name now? It's called like HD 2D yeah, or yeah. 2D HD, whichever it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I missed that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like a little universe. To kick off. Yeah. That's great. But it looks amazing, though. There's a demo out now, but I don't yeah. even need to play the demo. <laughs> You're not going to play the demo? Off too. I think that's that's a 2022, right? That's yeah, I next think so. year. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's all know. you're going to get for a while. Mm-hmm. Like the ways that different companies sort of remix nostalgia and like bring back pixels in different ways. And some like Capcom go really, really authentic with it. Um, in the case of the Mega Man games, you know, whereas Square Enix and, and this Octopath team, you know, has HD pixels or whatever you want to call it. It's great. And I love mm-hmm. that it's not just another traditional. I, I thought the Octopath Traveler battle system was really, you know, cool and interesting. But like, I'm glad that they're, that they're you know, trying their hand at something a little bit different on this one, too. Mm-hmm. It isn't triangles just a regular ass uh, <laughs> tactical RPG. Um, just tri- it's hard to tell. Well, I mean, like, like, tactics was a very it was very very deep. There are a lot of systems there, but I don't know when I the triangle in a strategy game makes me think of the Fire Emblem Rock Paper Scissors uh, yeah. battle method, which is a little bit more which simple. And there but must this- be multiple triangles because they showed the elements one right, which was like lightning, fire, ice, I think. Unless that wasn't the triangle, and the triangle was the weapon triangle, which is from Fire Emblem, which is, you know, axe, spear, sword. But I mean, I didn't even, I, I took it to mean the three main characters they showed off. Ah. 
Um, yeah, There's you're probably you're, you're probably right. Then. Like the the three viewpoints. Maybe it's like a whole theme of the game. Yeah, I think I think we cracked it. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> um, nailed it. They're standing on triangles. There's three project solved. <laughs> I don't know. Will you play that one, Sam? I know you don't like turn-based yeah. games. No, I do like turn-based games. I don't like cards. I I can play one turn-based game a year, and Octopath was my one for that year. I only played like a quarter of it, which is two out of eight paths, I think, maybe three mm-hmm. out of eight. Because like I think like the first two hours of that game and the back eighty mm-hmm. hours of that game are pretty boring. But that yeah. like middle six hours is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Loved it. No, I, I really like uh, JRPGs, but I, I just have a low tolerance for them a bunch in a row. So yeah, I allow myself one a year. But I've never played a tactical RPG. I oh. have Final Fantasy Tactics, and I I tried it on PSP, I think, for like like a plane flight, and I was like, this is not grabbing me because there's a lot of story and like when you play that now, like there's a mm-hmm. there's a lot of bullshit in that. But uh, but but I want to like it. And I want to play it. You so you don't play any of the like modern like uh, gears tactics or anything like that. I'm trying to think of any tactical. Well, I guess I've played Fire Emblem. Does that count? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of course. Yeah. 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 So I play. <laughs> I don't like any of the Fire Emblems except for the one with the, the kids in it. I try. I mean, they're they're usually pretty cool, but like they just started the same thing over and over again for me. What about Mario plus Rabbids? I played 10, 20 minutes Great. of that. Maybe no, I played probably a couple. <laughs> hours of that that's like an XCOM though is that the same thing as a tactical rpg yeah yes yeah man i played yeah. that really I bad i guess XCOM. i play a lot of these I play, remember that steampunk game that nintendo put out for 3ds it was uh, like a tactical rpg yeah yeah yes i don't remember it had like a hero type theme with aliens invading and they they made a big deal out of it at e3 they had like their own day of a press conference everybody's like this is what they're showing off what game are you talking about <laughs> I remember the game. The title. I I know you're talking about. I can't remember. Yeah, the theme is like it's like a steampunk action hero game, and it's a tactical RPG where you're like kind of behind the character, and you're you know you things are attacking, and it was like a Nintendo first party game like maybe five years ago that they were like really plugging at E3. Man, there's no way to know what it is. I wonder if that was. I'll try to look it up. I don't know how to look it up. Oh, codename codename Steam. Yeah, yeah that's I think it. that's it. Yes. Um, I missed one e three. So many people I... just yelling at their phones right now. <laughs> yeah. Pro- it was code name Steam, huh? See, that's the kind of game where it would come up on twenty questions, and we get it, but we wouldn't know the title of the game. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was surprised to see a remaster of Legend of Mana. That's a game I've yeah. never played. It's oh, a PlayStation it. One game. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. PS1 for me was like the heyday of RP. I played all of them. I played all the classic PS1 RPGs, and that one was really memorable. Um, not actually so much for its gameplay, but its art and the way that you build the world as you go is really cool. And it's, yeah, it's, and they oh, go ahead. They just re- they just remade the really cool Super Nintendo one that never came out here. But the PlayStation mm-hmm. one sounds like I was wondering if that would that came out here. But you didn't play it as an import, right? You actually just played it straight up. Yeah, it came out here. It is um, beautiful. It just it looks like a it looks like a painting, which I know mm-hmm. is something that people say about like Skyward Sword and other games, but it's actually true this time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I never played was, that one. I, I saw it yesterday. I, is, is that like a sequel to Secret of Mana? Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so there's a whole Mana series, but it got really thrown off in the United States. So there's like the first mana game here is mm. what we call Final Fantasy Adventure on Game Boy. And then there's Secret of Mana, which is actually a mana game in, in Super Famicom days. And then there's one that just didn't come out here for Super Nintendo that's probably like the best unreleased Super Nintendo RPG in the United States. It's a remarkable game. I played like a fan translation. And then it went to PlayStation and had a few. And then it had like a PlayStation 2 kind of 3D action RPG thing, which I, I from what I understood was just okay. And it's gone from there. It's just, it's around. Damon, you played the Mana Collection, right? The one for Switch? Yeah, yep, that was very cool. Mm. Um, there was Capcom Arcade Stadium, which is definitely relevant to my interests. I downloaded that. Did I hear a scoff? Somebody scoffed. Uh, I, d- I don't know if the way that they handled it is the best way. There's like 30 games total, but you have to buy them in three separate packs of 10 games each. Were the packs available today? Yeah, because I, I bought one of them. 
You did buy one of them, okay? Because we, we were looking at this morning. I was looking at it with Pear, and I just could not figure out how to. It is get very the games confusing. Into the system. Yeah. First, you download Capcom Arcade Stadium first, and that comes with 1941. And mm-hmm. you can also download Google's, the arcade version of uh, Ghosts and Goblins for free. Yeah, for free. For promotion for the new game. But then for mm-hmm. everything else, you can't download the games individually. You have to go to the store and download one or more of the packs. Or you can, do, you can download all three at once for like $5 off. And they're mm-hmm. separated by time. One's just the 80s. One straddles the 80s and the 90s. And one is a later 90s pack. I got that one because it has four uh, arcade shmups that I wanted to have. Oh. Are they good so, ones? Yeah. Nine, they're all good. 19XX, 1944, uh, um, Pro Gear, and uh, what's it? Giga, Giga, Giga Wing. Giga Wing's uh, yeah. really underrated, actually. Yeah, um, came to Dream, Dreamcast. Yeah, that's when mm-hmm. I bought it. Cool. Um, that's a did, cool collection. Mm-hmm. Can, you, can you play them vertically? Yes. Like, although 19XX is the only one that is vertically, was made that way. Giga oh, Wing I guess because the, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm surprised yeah. they didn't have, uh, by that point, um, I mean, it's because they came out and I think they're all what they call candy cab games, which ended up being just four by three on its side, like four, because they came back and forth. Like when Neo Geo came around, like arcades stopped using vertical a little bit, but are, are totally. So that's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm, I'm glad to have those games. I'm, I don't mind paying 15 bucks for four good shooters, but like Sam, the, you know, the Mega Man Legacy collections were so amazing. Like that's just yeah. they're much better package than how this is being handled, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, finally, well, actually, just to, to a point there is that the second Legacy collection was not handled by uh, the same people that did the first. So the second mm-hmm. Mega Man Legacy collection, which I believe I reviewed, uh, yeah. was not as good at all. They didn't have and any the, rewind features yeah. or anything like that. And those games just aren't as good, too. Mm. Um, Sam, what do you think of Star Wars Hunters? <laughs> I just, yeah, I can't even tell what that game is. Um, it's it's Maybe strange. Battle Royale. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Then they said something about it that that it. I guess they just said multi. Why wouldn't they say Battle Royale? That's the thing that confuses That's me true. about it. And then I don't know what yeah, Zynga's making. I think they making. said third person. But yeah, it's weird that it's made by Zynga. I heard that and I was like, huh. Mm-hmm. Well, I, did, I, mean, I missed I that part. Heard in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I'd be, I, I hate to say it, but I'd be more excited if it wasn't Zinka, right? But then also, I'm just not going to play this big mm-hmm. multiplayer game, even if it's Star Wars, unless it's space shooting. I mean, there's been there was that huge Star Wars mobile game, uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, where like, what did EA announce that it made them like a billion dollars or something mm-hmm. like that? Like, yeah, um, crazy. Geez. And so, you know, I, I I don't know. This must be fairly different than that, I guess. But um, that's what that that's what immediately sprang to mind for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pass. Well, I didn't think about it. Well, I think I think this game is probably far out. Well, maybe not. But like, is this far they didn't out? Mention man. EA at all? <laughs> no, because EA, EA is just EA at all. EA is I not think involved. They just mentioned Star Wars anymore. Mm-hmm. EA will have well, some Star Wars games, and everybody else will have some. There's yeah. just no excuse. I, I, I think they still have. I thought they still did for like another year no. or two. No, we all thought that like my, well, well, there's a lot there's a lot of nuance to that, right? Because Warner Brothers publishes Lego Star Wars games already. So like the exclusivity though that, that was oh, still that's, true. Th- that's still in place. Like we all thought like, oh, maybe that means people won't release games during that window, mm-hmm. but that's still unclear. It just mm-hmm. seems like Star Wars is like we're yeah. out of this. And like well, what's but- the repercussion there? They they might have had to pay a fee. But Mark, Mark may be right. That may sure. mean that this Zynga yeah. Star Wars game is a year away. I, right. I'm the, not sure. Mm-hmm. And which is not far, right? I mean, that wouldn't be a, a big deal. But man, I just can't imagine Star Wars Lucas Games forming a group and then for the rest of this year not putting out stuff because of EA. That would be crazy. We'll see. Well, it's just tough because the, the, the big thing was like, oh, they're, they're not just exclusive to EA anymore because Ubisoft announced that game. But that's you be massive like that game is not going to be out for a while and mm-hmm. so i thought it was still yeah. respecting that uh exclusivity they can't release a game but ubisoft and now bethesda working on indiana jones i don't know if that's part of it but anyways they can start developing a game they just can't release it until the ea right. deal is up these are all assumptions we don't you know, know. Yeah, who I, this, knows? <laughs> I just realized how stupid i was being where that star wars announcement was in the nintendo direct <laughs> Yeah, we're like yeah. that. 
Maybe that's a connection that everyone else made instantly, but like it just now dawned on me because I saw thought Zynga and I then I thought of that mobile game and I'm like, oh, it's some weird Star Wars mobile mm-hmm. thing. But I'm like, no, this is a Switch project. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I had. And it, mm-hmm. Is it unclear if it's exclusive? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. But it was. In, well, why would the, why if it if it were not exclusive? Why in the world would Nintendo? you know, announce it in their own direct. I know it's strange. It, I mean, it, it's, it's hard like though, because they start they, adding stuff with third parties, but I don't know. I didn't feel like that. Nintendo. And I guess PlayStation does this as well. Every time they have a direct or a state of play, they make it seem like everything you're seeing is exclusive. Like this yeah. is coming to this. And so they announce fall guys is coming to switch. And then we wake up this morning. We find out at the exact same time, fall guys is yeah. also coming out to Xbox. Yeah. So it's yeah, always it's weird strange. how they package those together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They clearly want a little bit of spectacle going on in those directs, which makes it all the stranger why very wooden businessmen come on and do all the introductions. But yeah. ask Nintendo. Yeah. And then Anuma comes out and says, I'm not showing you Zelda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we do have a game. The only part Justin remembers. <laughs> has Zelda in the name. Would you want this? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I'm not showing you Breath of the Wild 2, which, like, I, that's another thing where, like, they're in a little bit of a situation where, like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. We're like, I made fun of that moment, too, where I'm like, they come out and said, we're not going to show you the thing you want to see. But, like, how mad would everyone would have been mm-hmm. if the music starts and, like, you see Link and then you're like, oh, Skyward yeah, Sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you notice the first shot they showed of it was those the bird? So it's like, okay. Yeah. They're just like, let's set expectations. That's all what they were trying to do with the 2021 thing, though, is saying, like, these yep. are all games from early 2021. They're just trying to set expectations so people don't get too excited. People all get that excited stuff, anyway. All that stuff is absolutely deliberate. Um, and on, they know they have a Zelda game coming out that everyone on Earth, you know, it's the biggest yeah. thing on the planet. And so they completely don't want any ambiguity about, like, no, 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 no. Hmm. We're, not, we're not showing you that. We're showing you this other game instead. Exactly. And finally, there was no no Metroid. The, no Metroid. The whatever's going on with Metroid Prime Four. The game's continues. only been in development two and a half weeks, so you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. If Breath of the Wild Two is not coming this year, that, that Metroid Prime Four is not coming next year. I don't think. And uh, like, I I no. don't I don't know. It, it seems like Splatoon is popular enough that I'm surprised that they're going to be pushing a, a Splatoon 3, especially since there's no new system. So I, I yeah. just wonder, like, it just seems that seems like a really strange early tease, and I would imagine Splatoon 3 would end up in a different system. I mean, Splatoon, well, Splatoon 2, 3 is 2022 as well, so that's not even, like, being encased mm-hmm. as their big fall game. So Splatoon was yeah. sort of uh, right. stranded and trapped on the Wii U, right? And Splatoon mm-hmm. 2... Splatoon 2 was really Splatoon 1.5, and I'm not taking anything away. Like, the game's really, really yeah. cool and really good, but, like, they got it out really fast in the Wii's lifespan, and it didn't, you mm-hmm. know, it didn't do much that was nuts. And, like, Splatoon 3 kind of feels more like the actual sequel, sequel. like, that feels like it's going to have new ideas in it. What a weird tease that was, too. Yeah, it was, it was so strange. It was very weird. Well, and I love that they're leaning into, like, Splatoon has been post-apocalyptic Earth from the beginning. It's post-apocalyptic Earth where, like, fish people, like, squid people won and took over for mammals. And, like, that's mm-hmm. always been the story of Platoon, but now they're, like, bringing that to the surface, mm-hmm. like, with the upside-down Eiffel Tower mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Like, yeah. they're really leaning into the lore of it, which used to be sort of buried, which it's it, it looks really cool. And I want to be clear, like Splatoon 2, uh, we were just talking about the Wii U a lot, but the Splatoon 2 came out on Switch. Like that game is a Switch popular yeah. game. So it's a contemporary popular Splatoon game. And I don't know why I, I wouldn't fork that audience if I were Nintendo unless they have a real Destiny 2 reason to do it. And I think that's strange. Mm. Okay. Well, that was the latest Nintendo Direct. Let's share what we've been playing. Sam, did you have a question for Mark? I did. So what? I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing uh, Cat Mario uh, uh, Bowser's Fury, and it's. I love it. Sure. First of all, I, I think it's really fun, and I just like love having a, a just a, a polished Mario game to be playing. However short, I, I've been playing it. You know, for hours and hours this week, and I know I'm halfway through. So I think that's really cool. But how much does it drive you crazy as a Mario speedrunner that they change Mario's move move sets up? And specifically in this game, they just take out really strange stuff like the backflip. It's just not in there. 
Instead, he like crouches down like Super Mario 2 style and builds up energy and then jumps up with his hat pulled down. Like it's completely useless. You can't backflip. Tell Couple me. things. For yeah, one, things. that's not a three D that is not a three D Mario game, even though three D is is in the title. That's not a three D Mario game. So that's already out of my wheelhouse. For two, no Mario wait, games wait, play this. Wait, game. wait, what? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Bowser's Fury. Please I want to be clear too, that, that Mario 3D World. Is it is a I don't even want to discuss that. That game is just it's barely playable in the Mario uh, in the way Mario moves. But Bowser's sure. Fury is more like Odyssey, but yeah. it's not Odyssey's move set. It has the rolling, but it doesn't have other things. It doesn't That's have like the, a, the backspring. From what I've seen, the Bowser's Fury is a lot of people are guessing that that is a proof of concepts, like something that they're trying out. And a lot of people seem to be liking it. And so people are theorizing that that is eventually going to be a new game. Yeah. Probably clearly, not in the mainstream, like Mario, like 3D Mario games. But I, I mean, I think it's clearly clear as day setting up, you know, maybe not, but like it's an open world. It's an open world Mario game where like, you don't have to go to an overworld to go to the next level. The next level is just there. Yeah. Like it's, it's continuous. Yep. Uh, but mm-hmm. Sam, you're, you're right about the move set. Like it's weird. It's not Drives the ga- crazy. It's not the galaxy move set, but it is also not the 3D yeah. world move set. It's different. He has like yeah. the air dive and like yeah. It, it's 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 you weird. can't it, punch or kick. So if because you can't punch or kick, you can't do the you do diving in a different way where you dive into a ball. Yep. And if you're gonna do the dive, you can't do mm-hmm. dive and slide. It yep. just all these patterns that you have for Mario, he doesn't even do a triple jump. Did I mention that? No triple jump. He just goes woo woo. That's it. Just the double jump, huh? I mean, yeah. that that is the problem. Is like I, I was so excited for Odyssey, and it's just different enough from sixty four that like right. it drives me wild playing that game. And like yeah. to me, Sunshine is like unplayable because I played way too much sixty four. That I tried. Mm-hmm. Sunshine is the closest to sixty four to uh, to any uh, of any of the three D. And it's just yeah. different enough where it just it drives me wild. That's why I like Galaxy because yeah. Galaxy doesn't try to be any of the other ones. But um, they, you know what they took out also is the thing in Galaxy which I finally got used to, which is the uh, in midair you can do a little spin to extend your jump. Like I actually really like playing yeah. with that because you can really really cheese your way up walls and stuff in interesting ways when you have that. They just took that out in this too. This is a, that was an Odyssey. It's just so weird. It's like you're playing it's with a Mario yeah. game with with half the move set. It's the most bizarre feeling. Like it feels claustrophobic or it's something. It's because it's it's because it's, it's not a 3D Mario game. <laughs> it's just different. And it's you're using different. that as like a ser- You're saying that as like a series name. <laughs> yeah, you, Mario you gotta, 4, you, Sunshine, Galaxy One and Two, and Odyssey. Those are the 3D mainstream Mario games. Like everything else is just like a I don't want to say spinoff, but they're different games. Like 3D yeah. World is just a different game. It's not trying to be a 3D Mario. I mean, it game. definitely. So it's just going to be different. Well, but then Bowser's Fury gets even weirder. I, I'm I'm almost with you because 3D World has a fixed camera, <laughs> and the other games don't. And then that's part right. of what separates them. Mm-hmm. Except Bowser's Fury is 3D World with an yeah. unfixed camera. It feels more like Odyssey yeah. than anything else. Yeah. But you got the cat suit and stuff that screws up the yeah. move sets, I think. And yeah. so they just can't have mm-hmm. these these in-depth acrobatic move sets working. Like seriously, some of the platforming in that game, it's exactly like Galaxy. It's exactly like Odyssey. You get up on these giant contraptions, they're spinning in the air, you have full camera control, you got a long jump carefully. Like it's wonderful. It has all that. You can wall jump, mm-hmm. you can do all that. And then you realize, like, oh, I just tried to do a backflip and I just ran to a wall because it's just not in there. <laughs> or like, what's the little turnaround one? Yeah, I forget what they he calls. Yeah, yeah you're like your side side flip, flip or whatever. Yeah. Side flip. Yeah, I think that's in it, but it's just like it doesn't trigger the same way. It feels different. Yeah, it, it, the side. You flip should try it, man. It'll different. drive me crazy. Odyssey. I don't. I don't. Odyssey drives me crazy. Okay. I love <laughs> that game, but it drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> how how much, Justin? It sounds like you're playing Bowser's Fury also. Uh, a little. I, I'm actually with Sam. I thought I was alone because everyone seems to love it. I don't. I don't like 3D World very much. I bought it and then instantly regretted it. I, I think. Oh, I think Mario is really hard to control, and I. I feel like I can't jump anywhere that I'm trying to jump. Mm-hmm. Especially on the bigger screen, like on the 3DS or on the Wii U, 
um, I remember playing it on the screen a lot and like it made a lot more sense. But like, yeah, yeah. on the on oh. the Switch, with it just doesn't it doesn't feel good. And you, I'll give you a real controversial statement, which is um, I'm playing it with my daughter who's six, and we've been playing. We're right at the very end of Sackboy, and we actually like Sackboy quite a bit more mm. than 3D World. Yeah, Mark likes Sackboy. Like it's um, it, I it's love for, Sackboy. Like you, the weird thing in 3D World is it's really, really easy in co-op to leave your partner behind. They trail mm-hmm. off the screen behind you, then they get bubbled and catch up to you. And Sackboy yeah. has a lot more of like that uh, old mm-hmm. Lego game camera, where like it's a lot more willing to yeah. keep you both on the screen together. Oh yeah. Oh, I should mention too, Mark. This has a run button, which is super weird because Mario gets these boosts as he runs in, in a 3D environment. It's the weirdest thing to be holding down a button while also doing other stuff. Yeah. Um. It's for. I, I would recommend 3D weird. World. I, I was thinking about recommending it to to my uh, family who has kids, and I, I I was thinking about that, and that actually uh, will stay in my hand. I think um, they are playing Unraveled um, with a uh, you know a, a, with a five year old right now, and he loves that, and so that might be a, may, maybe Sackboy is the next thing to play after that. And Unraveled came to Switch, which is really neat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good How much? Oh yeah. How much gameplay is in Bowser's Fury? Like, uh, can you play it for hours? Like, I, I, I have no idea. Oh yeah, yeah. So I played for probably f- uh, every night. I've played it two hours probably since Sunday. So at least eight hours, I and I have fifty out of a hundred. I think I've read four to five. So you might just be taking your time, or yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I like getting everything. Maybe what I read was wrong too. I, I haven't. I haven't. I'm only what twenty cat shines into it or whatever they're called. Yeah, at fifty, there's like a really funny <laughs> mid-game thing. And I just experienced that. So now I'm going to be going for the 100. Hmm. Well, I do need something new to play. I, I beat God like of I War. I try that now. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like fun. I beat God of War for the first time since it was out in 2018. You beat it? Yep. Jeez. Yeah. Played it a yeah. couple hours every night. Amazing game. Amazing game. Mark, where do you come down on God of War? Love it. Yeah. Fantastic game. Yeah, that game's <laughs> awesome. And and I I we uh, are doing a performance review for it, and I just watched it, and it made me want to play it because now yep. it's like, hey, remember how you can play in 4K or you can play in 60 FPS? Well, on PS5, mm-hmm. you don't have to choose anymore. It's just yep. it's 4K, and it looks amazing, and it, it looks really really good. I've also been watching uh, Alana Pierce; uh, she's streaming it on PS5, and I, I watched her play for like an hour, and I was like, dude, I really want to play this game again. <laughs> yeah. There's so it. many games that are are moving over. Like I, I'm playing uh, Division Two again because that's on PS5 now and it looks super crisp and yeah. it's super smooth. Mark, does it drive you crazy that they took out the long jump? <laughs> Division Two, <laughs> in God of War, in Division Two, and, and in in God of War. <laughs> Every Definitely game should have a long War. jump. It doesn't. It doesn't bug me that much in Division Two, but in God of War, it it doesn't work. I, <laughs> game doesn't work without a long jump. <laughs> The first Besides thing you do in that game is technically out. a long jump, I guess. You jump across that bridge. <laughs> he can long jump, yeah. Um, <laughs> you just push I, a button and he does it. Yep. Last night I started Little Nightmares 2. I played about an hour of that, and so mm-hmm. far so good. It's got some big limbo and inside vibes. But then my DualSense oh, cool. controller mm-hmm. died, so I had to con- I had to charge that. Okay, charged. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It didn't like uh, get drift, drifty or something. I just, the batteries ran out. So while I was charging, I flipped over to my Xbox and was just like looking around at some of my older games in my library. And I stumbled upon every Extend Extra Extreme. Um, oh, that game's so good. And I hadn't played it in so long. And I, so I booted it up. And like my, you know, it's an Xbox Live Arcade game. My high score mm-hmm. is still there. My high score is like 16 trillion points. Just it's a very, <laughs> it's a high scoring game. That's not a, that's not a brag. That's just that you rack up those kind of scores. So yeah. I started playing it and I was like, I have no memory of how to play this game. But after like three rounds, I was throwing up like three trillion scores. So I was like, okay, I think maybe, I think maybe I'm back in it. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it. <laughs> Yeah, that, I, I remember the gameplay loop in that game and the the feeling of, yeah, it's a really great game. It's like, uh, Mark, are you familiar with this game? No, I've never even heard of it. No, not at all. Uh, it's a, a, a rhythm game, but it's abstract. There's just like shapes floating around the screen and you have a little symbol and you have to blow yourself up and that will cause uh, the other shapes to detonate in a chain reaction and it'll keep going and multiplying your score until it can't hit anything else to explode. You have to blow and yourself up in like the perfect spot. Yeah. So you have to find the right mm. spot and then you also if you blow yourself up in time with the music like on the beat your explosion will be bigger you can take more out and then 
you after you blow yourself up and the chain reaction ends, you'll reform and you're um, invulnerable for three seconds, which gives you time to pick up these power ups that like inc increase the, your time. Time's always running out uh, and increase your score multiplier, and then you start, have to blow yourself up again. And so like your score is going up and up and up, and then as the time's running down, you're trying to like grab time increases. You know, to, uh, you you can get all the way down to like you have ten seconds left. It starts at three minutes. 10 seconds left but if you're lucky enough you can get like oh i'm back up to 60 seconds and you know your score is still going up and up and up that's why you're scoring in the trillions it's great it's basically elite bomber it reminds me games. of yeah like that description reminds me of like something like pagel like you can oh, yeah. fall flat but when it but when it works and you get yeah. to just like watch it happen and you're just like I'm the best. Look at me go. <laughs> yeah. Man, Damon, I haven't thought about that game in a long time. That game was really good at like getting you into a flow state of like respawn, move, explode, respawn, move, explode. And like it's all time to the rhythm of the music, like you said. And so like you're trying to go really, really fast, but like get just be smooth about it. Like, it, yeah, it has, it has a great feel. It's great. It came out two generations ago, and it's just there on my Xbox Series X. They're yeah. not trying to charge me for it again. That is nice. It's great. Take, take that, Nintendo. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, yeah. Extracurricular okay. activities. Talk about the games. Oh, I thought you were playing I, Division 2. I, 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 I didn't know well, either. Only, it's, only one of, it's, one of my, it's only one of my games. I'm also playing Genshin Impact. I'm completely obsessed with that game. Okay. What a fun game that is. That's that's a, a thing I made. It says Anime Avengers, if you can't see, mm -hmm. because that's basically what the game is. And I'm also playing Sackboy, <laughs> but I'm only playing with my friend from Canada, so it's slow going. We're finally in the last world. CJ? Anybody? No, IGN Superfan Potato King. I only play when he is able to play, so it's it's sl it's slow going, but is I love it, that game. Is it slow because he's Canadian? I don't think you're allowed to say that. <laughs> He's got that syrupy internet. Uh, no, uh, just because he's uh, he's just busy and I'm busy and whatever. So it's just like one night a week we play for like two or three hours. We we get further. We do. We also do that thing where it's like if we missed any bubbles, we we won't move on until it's me, him, and uh, and my yeah. wife. Yeah, Same. I hate oh bubble collecting in, in that game because of uh, strategy guide pasts. Which <laughs> which game? Yeah. In in um in, in any little big planets, they were oh. really well hidden in the first two. Frustrating. Well, so this one's not like as bad as so. It's like every level Tommy has a set amount of like these blue bubbles, and then there's like gifts, and then there's beating the level without dying, and then there's a certain amount of points you have to get. Mm. And if you're the best, you can do it all in one go. Yep. We are not the best. No. So it takes us several times. <laughs> um. I, I want to go real fast. Yeah, I'm playing. Uh, I'm playing Batman: Arkham Asylum. <laughs> nice, cool. <What> perfect game. <laughs> cool, cool um, winter game to play too. A couple, my a couple. It, it's been a trip where that game came out 11 years ago, which like I don't know what I expected. Like I probably would have guessed that, but it just seems yeah. crazy. It was one of those like I'm getting old moments. Um, yeah. And actually, to my disappointment, um, I dug out my Xbox 360 disc. And put it into my Xbox Series X, and it didn't work. Mm. What? It's it said, um, mm. you know, this game. It said you can't. It it didn't. It gave me some message that's like you can't play this game on your Xbox Series X. Um, so I had to buy. Mm. I had to buy. Um, well, so Arkham, did you just plug in your Xbox One and play it? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, what's the cutoff? Like, what's the rationale? Like. Man, the logic behind the that. Arkham games would totally up res nicely too. That could be an easy 4K well, release. But last gen, they released a, <laughs> an HD remake. Yes. Same. Um, yeah, they did and, do that. And the HD remake was really criticized for reasons that I can't remember, but I'm playing it and I think I think it's great. Um, I'm almost to the end. The game, the game is also surprisingly short. Like, um, I've been too busy the last few nights to play it, but like do you ever have this thing where like a game in your mind is just gigantic and then yeah, you play it, then you play game. it but then you played it. I like I beat it in the four day weekend. I got right to the end and I didn't even really? play it that much. That game's like eight hours. Yeah. yeah you're probably thinking of city. Mm. I, I don't know. I, and it's not because like, I haven't played it in nine years. So it's not like, Oh, I just have memorized or everything is like, I think that mm -hmm. sometimes games 
game design and like games are more stretched out and padded now. Like that game doesn't fuck around. Like it just goes from thing to thing and then mm. ends. Like that's it. There's a lot of collectibles in it though. So oh a- yeah, I, I'm not. I, I'm. I've got probably a third of the Riddler trophies. Yeah, maybe you spent more time getting mm, those yeah. in progress. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah. You know what's really the weird collectible in that game is the uh, Arkham stone monuments. Yeah. It's yeah. so strange. Like some of those are really well hidden. They're great. I love how no- nothing in that place makes any sense. And not just because it's an insane asylum, which by the way, yeah. in like 2021, I don't know how okay that is. You're mm. just... Batman's just beating down inmates <laughs> like Arkham and like, <laughs> but they're criminally insane. Just, well, yeah, yeah no. but I don't know how well you remember. Yeah. There's, a, there, there's a section of the game where you find the, like really like the completely, the people that have gone like feral and they all get out of their cage. And I'm like, I don't know that mm-hmm. this is okay anymore, <laughs> right. actually. Yeah. Like, because they're, they're not, <laughs> they're not acting under their own. Uh, no, they're, free not, will, right? they're not mentally sound. And, right. I don't know that that part of it is that the game that has that pretty cool Easter egg room with all the supervillains in it. Uh, the to my memory, it was not discovered. They there's a secret room in Arkham Asylum that like teases and announces Arkham City, and no one found it until after City came out. And then um, there's the Calendar Man mm-hmm. room, which changes on certain calendar days of the year, and people discovered those yep. over like a ten year period or something. Yeah. Yeah, the secret room was mm-hmm. behind some. Yeah, bomb you have to like change your console date. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, Where was anyway, the secret room? Uh, it's behind a bombable wall that doesn't show up in your yeah. like detective vision. It just looks okay, like a normal, normal texture, so no one, yeah. no one had any idea it was there. So cool. Yeah, um, and I think I'm gonna play City next. Hmm. Cool. You're making me want to play Asylum. Oh, uh, dude! Yeah, for I, sure. I recommend it. Um, but I want a 4K version so bad now. Like that game would just mm-hmm. up-res easily. It's like kind of cartoony, kind of realistic. It would look lovely. I mean, the Xbox One and PS4 got an up version that I guess must not be 4K, but like a remaster mm-hmm. came out and then I bought I bought that on the Xbox backwards compatible store. And I think it, I don't remember if it's a trilogy or just the first two games, but Night is on Game Pass anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it would have had like a probably a pretty cool set two. of... Yeah. I think there's probably a pretty great PC version of that, you know, because I'm sure people will have, have figured out how to stretch it if not the, the own company. Strikes. Rocksteady did that, is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if they did the port. Probably not, actually. It'd be really nice to get their new Batman game this year. Uh, the Suicide Squad game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's not their Batman game. It's the other company's Batman game. That's what us talking about that last week is what made me want to replay Asylum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Extracurricular activities. I have a new show recommendation. It's actually not new. It's new to me. It's a few years old. The show is called The Sinner. Has anyone watched it? Mm -mm. It's on Netflix. There are three seasons. It was originally a USA original. It's a detective drama uh, starring Bill Pullman as 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 the main detective. And I don't think I'd seen him in anything since uh, Independence Day, but he's really good in it. And each season is a different <laughs> murder mystery. And uh, the trick is that um, in each season, they, they show right away uh, who the killer is. So it's not a whodunit. It's a, it's a why done it. Hmm. Why done it? <laughs> <laughs> it's really that, good. Is that, right. his, is that his catchphrase? Yeah, he says, so why done it? <laughs> <laughs> who done it we're not here to solve who we're here to solve yeah. whom's done it <laughs> how did you even find a three-year-old usa today usa well, channel show the third season is brand new oh, and just okay. came out so that's why it was sort of surfaced to me and so we plowed through the first two seasons we're halfway through season three the first two are great the, the third season is has not been as good so far but i highly recommend the first two the one, uh, uh, I will preface it by saying there's, it's a very serious show. There's no comic relief. It's not Cobra Kai. It's just like a, oh really, ter- a really terrible murder happens. Why okay. did it happen? It's just kind of that. But the first season is, is very in, uh, involved with music, and the music is amazing. It's right up my alley. I love cool. it. Huh. I have a recommendation then. I'm watching the third brand new season of Disenchantment, the Mac Raining mm. show. Yeah. And uh, I don't get why the show's not big. 
I think it's really, really great. The third season's definitely the best yet. And the music is by Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo, and it's really, really good too. And I love the voice cast. It's the best parts of Futurama. I think it's as good as the first couple Futurama seasons at this point. And uh, I think it deserves to be watched. It's really great. It's also very serialized. It's it's like more of a storytelling uh, show than any Matt Groening thing has ever been. The situational comedy aspects of it are just completely gone. It's like written episode to episode with a through line. And it's really good. That seems like something Justin would watch. Have you not watched Disenchantment? I watched the first set of episodes they came out and didn't love them. That was a long time ago. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's been sort of in the back of my head to like get back to someday. Mm-hmm. And that brings us to video game 20 questions. Oh, Our boy. Suggestion this week comes from Jay in Buffalo. And uh, he'll, he's going to let you guys know that this game is his favorite game of all time. Oh, that's a good clue. Unless With that. Unless he has really bad taste. Does he like good games? <laughs> yeah. Is that I your need question? To know more about Jay. Yeah, that's a pretty good question. We can just ask about Jay for a while. <laughs> Let the questioning begin. Uh, can you play this game on your Nintendo Switch? No. Are you sure? That does, yes. That's not a don't, don't put up another finger. That, is that a second question? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Would you call this a retro game? Uh, uh, I would not call this a retro game. <laughs> uh, um, that probably means that probably means it's like a Wii game, and then there's a bunch of Twitter kids that are like, "I'm yeah. so nostalgic for yeah. you know." Um, yeah, whatever. I love that. Wario, Wario. What is it like? Retro games are like people say it's like ten years or something like that. That seems a little too low to me. I yeah. don't know. And that term is tough, too, because some people use that to mean games that are, lo- appear to be vintage, and we should really mm-hmm. just be using, you know, the mm-hmm. latest vintage or old games. Um, hmm, where should we go from this? Is this a, a platform exclusive? Yes. Is it exclusive uh, to, okay. to, the, to a PlayStation platform? No. And you can't play it on your Switch. Well... That doesn't mean anything because no. is this a Nintendo game? game? Games. <laughs> is it a Nintendo game? Yes, that's five. All right. So it's do the characters Nintendo in this game, game appear in the Mario universe? No. no. Right. <laughs> Stop! I was on Game Scoop. This one got a question. <laughs> that, one, that one sent us down a bad path. <laughs> uh, shoot. Okay. Um, does this do? Is this a character from this game? Are they playable in Smash? No. Whoa. It's a, I think it's Advance Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I think Damon would call that retro or vintage. Yeah, maybe at this. Yeah, it's hard to tell, huh? Uh, he was very quick to answer no too, so it's not like <laughs> I don't know. Even the Squid Kid said he too. wouldn't call it. You know. That'll be so mm-hmm. much Nintendo, especially if it's somebody's favorite game. It's codenamed Steam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 it just happens to be Jay from Buffalo's <laughs> favorite game. Nintendo swept that one under the rug, didn't they? I mean, if they're, if they're doing their second release of Xenoblade characters, you know something was wrong with uh, codenamed Steam. <laughs> You guys, don't, you guys don't do the year thing anymore because that now I'm still just like confused yeah, on where we do are. The like, years. All right, is it is it before? Did well, it come out before January first? To, to well, you should do after. Well, I, I think, guess it wouldn't matter. Huh? We well, need just, to know before 2010. I think. Well, in my opinion, we should get console because we already. Yeah, have yeah, that would be helpful for me if it's a Nintendo. Did this appear Nintendo, in a disc based console? Yes. Okay. All right. Do they have tiny discs? Wait, so... Just, <laughs> just as it was GameCube. <laughs> was it tiny discs, Damon? Yeah. Is that the size they, of them? Were no. They little, were they little no. Tiny discs? No, they weren't. <laughs> so it's a Wii game. Yep. Yeah, or or Wii I Wii guess could or be Wii, Wii U. But, but, but Damon wouldn't consider it retro. But some was, people might. Was this we, game... Uh, Nintendo Land. Uh, Wii Music. Wii but that has me's that's, in it. That's also nobody's favorite game. I just think it'd be funny. Nobody's favorite game. 
I think uh, Wii, Wii Music might be the least fun I've ever had. Nintendogs <laughs> plus cats. <laughs> <laughs> we already did um, the Nintendogs plus cats. That was that one we botched. Was the this first uh, letter is the last letter? Was this game? Um, was this game aimed at a wide non-gamer audience? Um, I don't. <sighs> Oof, that's tough. I refuse to answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the answer we need. Is that legal? <laughs> because want, it's not, that eliminates the brainy Nintendo Oxy games. I, think. I want um I want Damon to refuse to answer <laughs> once in a while when it's not tough. Just yeah. <laughs> no, that'll be too easy for you guys if I answer that one. I'm not telling you that. <laughs> yeah, Is this I, I, there's four thousand. You that, you'll win. I would like to invoke <laughs> my twenty yeah. questions amendments. <laughs> um, was this game played with Damon's motion controls? Movie. Yes, that's 10. Well, hold on. Actually, somebody's favorite game of all time with motion controls? That's weird. <laughs> well, Hang on. I mean, Resident Evil 4 had a really good version on Wii. That's true. It could be Resident Evil 4. No, no, I don't think that. We've, I'm just we've saying narrowed that. narrowed it down. I, I just saying, I'm just saying, if that was somebody's favorite game, I'd be like, more power to you. That's probably my favorite version of one of my favorite games ever. So wait, so I need a recap. We know What's that game is was- looking something up. It was a Wii game, and it's a Nintendo game. Wii or Wii U? Oh, right. But the correct. But the character doesn't yeah. appear in Smash. Yeah. Well, as a fighter, I think we do. Right. Because the Nintendo comes up and pause the screen. Well, there's all there's a that's well, why I specified it that way because there's a billion and one trophies and assist mm-hmm. thingies and. So, okay. the question of <laughs> does it have motion controls? The best way I can answer that is surely it must have. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely a Wii game. It's Is this a, be. Should we ask if it's a collection of games? Because it could be that party pack thing that came out with a Wii controller or a Mario Party. We play. Those, no, that's the Mario characters. We already asked that. It could be We Play. Yeah. We Play. Um, Does this have a bunch but, of games in well, it? But yeah, that. but the thing is, is Damon would know that we play and we sports and all that. He would know that those have motion control. And we also said oh. that it wasn't one of those mainstream games. What about that game that was like 30 classic board games or whatever that Nintendo made? Remember that? That's yeah. his favorite game of all time. They had like it's solitaire in it and stuff. Board and then on, remember on DS, they had the 100 classic novels? No. <laughs> I read a, read a Sherlock Holmes mystery in that. It was great. On your oh, DS? Basketballs. <laughs> On my DS. I did it Before for science. Kendall's, I did it for science. You could like hold it like a book, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you could hold it like a book. Did you write the guide? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> you know, those are all public yeah. domain. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I could have just pasted it in a oh. guide and then it was <laughs> Dude, why don't we make a wiki that's just all the public yeah, domain public books? Domain. And movies. You just do all of that. SEO. SEO. Yep. <laughs> When I think about reading a book on a DS and holding it like a book, that's, that's not the craziest thing. I that played, sounds no, kind of natural. Right. There Just are a couple a of video bit. games. Um, Hotel Dusk was made to be played that way. The resolution wasn't high enough, though, so the words were really big on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's Ninja like Gaiden the Bible on, DS. on your Game Boy. Ninja was Gaiden was sideways. Way. Yeah. And you swiped. You only played with the um, Silas. Yeah. I wrote the guy. So many oh, weird, awful. so many weird things on the DS. Do you remember America's Test Kitchen? Yeah. There, and I, I used it. I, I I cooked along with it. I had propped my DS up in the kitchen. I was cooking along yeah. and watching the videos. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. All right, where are we okay. going with this? Okay, you got, is this you a got, collection of games? No. I I still so this is clearly a very good game if it's his favorite game of all time. Mm. It was on the Wii or Wii U, but it doesn't star a franchise character that's in Smash, but Nintendo made it. Um, this what game was that shooter? Scores? What was that game? That f- Red the Steel Two. Well, did this game get a bad score? Red Steel. No. How did Sam know? He knew this, exactly what I was talking about. This, <laughs> as I've said for every game mentioned so far, I wrote the guide for that. This could be an ES remix. <laughs> no, that didn't come out on Wii. But it could be a Wii U game. But it didn't get a physical release. Also, and, also doesn't take place in Mario. Like we just asked Mario if it was a collection game. of games, though. It just can't be an answer mix. Oh, well, I don't know if that counts. But yeah, I guess and do, it does. And do these characters appear in Mario games? Right. Mm. Yep. Or in Smash, yeah. Or in Smash, yeah. Oh, uh, man. We're forgetting um, about what we need to be thinking about is just like the, like, you know, like 
I know Pikmin is in Smash, but like the stuff like yeah. that, like the non-franchise mm-hmm. Nintendo stuff they made in that era. Mm-hmm. But I'm just having my brain. My like my I brain, thought it'd be like Wii Sports Resort, you know. My brain not work good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but he he said it's exclusive to Nintendo. What about other sports games? Was, you know, I guess there's Mario Strikers, but that's Mario. Yep. Um. Huh. Motion control. What if we started nailing about, down like what kind of game it is? I know. I, I think like, that's just going to make it real hard. What about? Is it helpful to know if it got sequels or if it's part of a series? Yeah, that's helpful. Is it part? Of I a, think it's good. Yeah. Is it? Uh, is it part of a series? Technically, it's a spinoff. Yeah, actually, yeah. I I, I retract my technically. It is. Oh, uh, maybe Excite Truck and Excite Bots. Oh, that's a really good one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Is this a driving never, game? Never, never heard of that. Driving game, yes. Is that our last question now, or do we have six left? You have we six have left. Six. Yeah. Does it? Um, it, it we have to just driving. do bots or trucks? Yeah, is it bots or trucks? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, are there transforming uh, well, robot bugs double. in this game? No, that's fifteen. <laughs> it's Excite Truck. Yeah. Is this Excite Truck? Sure is. Ooh, I played that better, in the I would have never got that. Before the Wii came out. One of the better Wii launch games. Better. That was, that was a better. launch game? That was a launch yeah. game for the Wii? Yes. They had that at the kiosks in GameStop instead of uh, Wii Sports. And so that was the first time I ever held a Wii remote was to play Accenture. And, and it, it exclusively used the Wii remote. It didn't use the nunchuck and you held it sideways. That's right. So that's why I got tripped up on motion controls. But surely you must like have to like flip it up in the air to get a big jump or no, something. Damon, the whole game is driving. Well, steering. It's all motion controls. All the yeah, steering. steering. You, don't, you don't press a yeah. button to. I guess you press a button to accelerate, and then you see yeah. steering like that. It's, okay. it's so hard to control. Here's a here's a fun fact. Um, in 2014, when I was running features at IGN, it was Nintendo's 125th anniversary, and so mm-hmm. we ranked the top 125 Nintendo games of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, did let's when, plays for all of them. Well, that was a, the project itself was like fun, but not ridiculous. But the mistake <laughs> was trying to do let's plays for all 125. Um, yeah, boy, I wish I wouldn't have made that call. Yeah. Um, but uh, but it Sight Truck was the opener. That was game 125 in the list. <laughs> wow. wow, nice. Uh, I played bots for guide writing, and that was that was okay. But it was such a crazy series, and I really like the question now: Did these are these characters fighters in Smash? It's yeah. just a truck. <laughs> Beat the crap out of Snake. Yeah. I think a lot about how there was a Daytona car was a fighting game character in that Sega fighting game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, IGN, IGN gave uh, Excite Truck an eight out of ten. I remember well. Solid did, eight. Did okay. the did the guy? It sold that, Jay on it. Yeah, was yeah. his name Jay? Did Jay leave a note about it being his favorite? Yeah, game? Yeah, you gotta explain just, that. He just said it's his. He just said it's his favorite game of all time. Oh, wow. Huh. Well, that's anticlimactic. <laughs> All right, we have it, 20 it, questions it, for it Jay. Is this the only game you've ever played? <laughs> <laughs> it gives me hope that every game out there has got to just be somebody's favorite yeah. game of all time. I know, I know. Yeah. Be, we gave it an that's 8 nice. out of 10 great. We said it was great. It's great. Mm-hmm. Great like, game. That's allowed to be anybody's favorite, favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I don't and, know why you're and, laughing. And what by Mark's reason? I don't know what it just. <laughs> it just just because a game gets an eight is there's so many games. No, I but can't like, even decide what my favorite game of all time is most of the time. But this guy Jay from Buffalo, <laughs> he knows that this monster but, truck game for the Wii is his favorite game of all time. I, I love don't know what you think yeah. is so funny about like it's a totally, <laughs> it's a great game. Let me let me defend Jay. <laughs> So it, it was a great game. Here's some things. Here's some reasons why people might have it as a favorite game. It's multiplayer. You can play with your friends, so you'd have good memories playing it, right? It's got split screen co-op. Sure. That's one All reason. Right. Another reason is that uh, it's arcadey, so you can keep playing it, so you can get higher and higher scores, and potentially just get really good at a very difficult move set, which is motion controlled racing. That's that's all I got. Also, it. also, it's 15 <laughs> years old now, so maybe little J, 10 year old J. Maybe his dad or older brother brought home the Wii on launch day along with Excite Truck, yeah. and they stayed up all night playing it and had a great time. And so now yeah, it's his exactly. favorite game of all time. Look, I want, I, I want to be clear. I'm not judging Jay. 
I'm just surprised. You're just a little bit. <laughs> You're just disappointed. <laughs> Mark, what's your favorite game of all time? Mario 64. <laughs> <laughs> I feel How does so it feel judged. now? How does it, it feel? feels awful. <laughs> Mario 64, all, one what of the better day. launch games for the Nintendo 64. Oh, thank you for that fun fact. <laughs> one of the better launch games. <laughs> one of the better launch games. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it's true. it. Pack Picks was one of the better launch games for Nintendo DS. Yeah. I I own Pack Picks. <laughs> Yoshi's Touch and Go. Yoshi's one of the better launch games for the Nintendo I, DS. I also own Yoshi's Touch and Go. <laughs> yeah, because that DS was hot. Some has um, returned. Dame. <laughs> How is Same bigger than ever? I mean, yeah, Dame is just I don't think she's, closer to the camera. I don't think she's still growing, although no? she's probably fatter because the nanny feeds her treats all day long. Her neck looks just positively shark like now. Yeah. Sam, as a side note, your uh, uh, vet that makes house calls is not taking any new clients, clients during COVID. Yeah, that makes sense, I suppose. But he's yeah. a great vet and a great pinball player. Okay, Same. Take us home. Same says, that's all the scoops that we have for you this week. <laughs> Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you. Let's see what you can. Thank you to Justin. <laughs> thank you to Sam. Thank you to Mar- wait, Mark. <laughs> and we're yep, meow. Yep. Thanks, Kat. My, my name is Same. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're meow. <laughs>